Right, hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming to my talk today um, about how we can use AI-driven data enrichment with Azure Cognitive Search. Um, now, I'm fortunate enough to have you all before lunch today, so I'm going to do a quick like, show of hands just before everyone's still, still awake. Is anyone using any kind of like, document enterprise-wide search tool at the moment? Not a single hand. Anyone using Cognitive Search already? Couple of hands. OK, anyone using AI to drive that cognitive search and to drive that kind of enrichment of their documents? No? OK, so hopefully there'll be some, uh, some learnings here today. Good stuff. Right. A little bit about me. So my name is Matt. I'm the head of data science for a consultant company called Adatis. I've been working for about eight years on the Microsoft Data and Azure AI platform. Um, two years of that has been working with Azure Cognitive Search um, and some of the applied AI components that sit around that. Um, if anyone needs a new doorstop, I've also published a book on uh, modern data warehouse in Azure, although it's slightly out of date now, so, uh, but go and check that out if you're interested. The focus of today's session, so as I said, we're going to talk about cognitive, uh, cognitive search and some of the AI-driven data enrichments that are available to us within that. So to start with, we'll look at the cognitive search building blocks, so what makes up a cognitive search service. We'll then talk about how we can start rolling in some of those custom skills and AI enrichments focusing on cognitive services and the skills that are available there, some of the custom skills that we can develop to help extend what comes out of the box. In particular, we'll look at things like OpenAI, which is obviously a very particularly hot topic at the moment, uh, and Form Recognizer, also an equally uh, popular technology, uh, and also Azure Machine Learning skills. And finally, we'll talk a little bit how we can maximize those AI enrichments that you've delivered. As I say, starting off with the cognitive search building blocks. So what is cognitive search? Cognitive search was devised really to meet three primary use cases. The first one is called enterprise search. And this is primarily about finding the right document and getting it in front of that user as quickly as physically possible. By this, a user should be able to type in a search, and, that right, and the correct document should be in front of them instantly. That should then save them time from having to go through network drives, uh, document directories, trying to whittle through SharePoint. We should just be able to find that, that document through a natural language search. This can also include intuitive search features that people of users such as Bing and Google come to expect, like advanced filtering, and those kind of natural intuitive search features. We can then build on top of that and start to talk about knowledge mining. So once we've got the right documents, how can we harvest the data from those documents and start to provide real life human readable answers directly from those documents to those users? Very often when you type a question into Google or Bing, it comes up with a nice little box at the top where it's summarized a, doc a document or an internet page for you and giving you that answer directly. So that's all about knowledge mining. It's about using those documents as a rich database of information and providing that data directly back to a user. And lastly, the, kind of the, the third tier here is all about document intelligence. So it's about taking the information in that document and enriching it, enhancing it, and making it more than just a black and white PDF and really turning it into something that is of real value to a company. And this is primarily where we're going to focus our, kind of our interest on today, is about how we can use AI, data science, machine learning, et cetera, to drive that document enrichment through a service like Cognitive Search. So the building blocks behind Cognitive Search. So we have, of course, in many kind of data-driven applications, there's a source of data, OK? This can be structured data, like SQL databases or CSV tables, for example. But because we're talking about documents here, very commonly this is unstructured data. This is PDFs, which can be, have all kinds of nasty formats inside of it. This can also be your common kind of office formats, your Word, PowerPoints, Excels, et cetera. All of these things can be treated as data sources. And what we want to try and do to deliver on any of those three use cases is drive those through into something that can be easily queried and searched. And this is what we call our search index. And principally, this is a large JSON structure that has a whole host of fields in it that we can then use for searching and, and filtering and all the kind of things you'd expect to see in a search. So to get from one to the other, we need a bridge. We need a, a mechanism of getting from the source through to the search index. And for us, for us this is called an indexer. And the indexer is the primary means of orchestration to get from one to another. It handles all of our common kind of orchestration needs, such as scheduling, uh, error handling, and bubbling up of any warnings or errors that might happen in that indexing process, but also mapping of fields. So we want to map some fields in a source to a different field in the search index. We can handle all that inside of our indexer. But that doesn't actually hold many of the activities. The actual activities themselves, what are we actually going to do to this document in order, is all contained within a skill set. 
And a skill set has a number of skills inside of it. And there's an example of some of the skills that we'll look at today listed out there. So these are the actual activities that are going to drive your document into something that is of real value to an organization. So just to kind of unpack the skill set for another minute or two. So principally, the skill set is, again, another JSON object. Okay? You're going to see this a lot today. Everything in Cognitive Search is, is built out of JSON, essentially. So in here, we'll have things like skill set metadata, which kind of tells us the name of the skill set and other associated kind of attributes about that particular skill set. Kind of the key piece here is then going to be a list of skills that we're going to apply to each document in order. And then some other kind of configuration items like which cognitive services resource we might be connecting up to, and also a knowledge store configuration, which allows us to write information back out into something like an Azure storage container or a data lake, for example. So a really kind of simple example of what a skill set might look like is a, a few skills that I've listed out here. So skill number one, let's get the content out of these documents. Skill number two, let's do some optical character recognition on top of all the images uh, that are inside that document. And then skill number three, let's merge those two content fields together. So we've now got a really nice combined set of content that represents all of the text, all of the content that is inside that document. And lastly, let's use a knowledge store to project that out into the data lake. And maybe we can do some analysis on that in another application or tool further down the line. So that's a really typical example of a simple skill set. But even that simplicity will give you an excellent search experience in Cognitive Search. OK, so let's get on to kind of the, the real kind of interesting stuff, the, uh, the cognitive skills and the custom skills that we can use. So the first one to talk about are the built-in cognitive skills. And there's a number of examples that I can give here. The first one is key phrase extraction. So this is where we can take the, the content of a document, we can parse our way through it, and we can find the key phrases or bits of information inside that content and start flagging those up to users and consumers of our search index. The next one is entity recognition and linking. So this is kind of similar to key phrase extraction, but now we're trying to identify maybe core people or locations or companies or, or dates, things like that, these kind of critical entities. And what's more is we can start to link those out into relevant Wikipedia articles or other areas um, across the internet. So we start building up this network of information inside of our search index. Uh, character recognition, obviously, is a fairly common one. If someone has scanned in a document and it's represented as a PDF as an, an, and images, we need to be able to understand what character is inside that and turn that into text that we can, we can utilize. PII detection, so being able to identify what fields might cause PII issues and we need to be tracking inside of our search index. Sentiment analysis is a very common use case. Um, and this is where we want to attach a negative or a, or a positive sentiment to certain parts of our content. And lastly, language detection and then translation. So can we actually take content out of our index and translate it into other languages? So the nice thing is that all of these skills are built out the box for you. You can very easily just plug these into your document index, and you've got this kind of functionality ready to go just by connecting up a cognitive services resource. So a couple of key facts. Um, so they do rely on a, on a separate cognitive service instance. You'll need to provision a cognitive service. You need to hook up the two connections with, a, with an API key. And you also need to expect some billing to come against that cognitive service instance as it's running the API queries for you. Typically, the pricing of these cognitive services is done around sort of every 1,000 transactions or 1,000 text records if it's a text-based API. Um, and the last thing to know is that obviously the return kind of objects from these services will vary depending on what you're looking at doing. Obviously, sentiment analysis is going to be very different to language translation. So just being a bit aware about what service you're using and the response that it's going to return. So apologies to show just like raw naked JSON on screen. I know that's not really the done thing. But just to show you how simple it is to configure these uh, cognitive skills straight out of the box. Um, this is the implementation of a sentiment skill. And this is all that you need in terms of a template to kind of start using this sentiment skill. And actually, this format is used across all of the different skills that we'll talk about today. Okay? And I'll break this down for you now. First thing we have is the skill metadata. So what skill is being invoked? In which case, in this case, it's a sentiment skill. Um, and what is the context of it? Where does it sit within the document tree? Then we have any skill-specific parameters. So in this case, we're looking at opinion mining and are we setting a default language. Different skills will have different parameters that we can set. We can all chuck those in at the top there. And then very simply, we have a bunch of inputs that we're going to pass into the skill, and then outputs that we're going to re return out of the skill. So these are what we're expecting to get back from a sentiment analysis skill, for example. 
as you can see, a really simple st structure that can get us going very, very quickly. OK, so that's the ones that are built out of the box. But what about you know, the things that we can't do out of the box? How do we extend past those things that are you know, already been kind of created for us? And this, we have a really excellent kind of set of tools called the Custom Web API Skills. And this really allows us to build a whole host of other use cases out using cognitive search. So some common examples that you, know, you might typically use when you're building out custom Web API skills. So things like highly specialized data processing or data extraction. So using something like regex can be quite difficult out the box with uh, cognitive search. But wrap it up in a function um, using a custom Web API, and you've got that instant ability to really kind of in-depth extract data from a document. So PII handling. So we talked about detecting PII previously, not that we can do much with it out of the box. Um, but we can use this kind of custom functionality to start actually handling those fields, doing encryption, obfuscation, et cetera, masking, all that kind of stuff. Any advanced content filtering, so getting rid of documents that we don't want to come through to our index. Further integrations, so integrations with other cognitive services that are not kind of plumbed in out of the box. Things like the um, computer vision APIs, for example, very common that we want to utilize but don't have a custom activity already. Uh, things like the OpenAI service, form recognizer, all very common integrations that can help out with knowledge mining. If you want to start doing custom logging or custom process kind of control around this kind of indexer process, we can start to write these kind of logs out into a database and do our own analysis on top of that. And lastly, any integration with custom machine learning models. So you may have deployed a model as an Azure function, for example, or as a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and integrating with those can be done through these kind of custom web API functions. So broadly, the way this works is we have our cognitive skill set. So here we've got a couple of skills. We're kind of extracting content. We're going to do some OCR. And then we're going to call our first web API skill. So what's really going to happen kind of, out of the, um, under the skin here is that we're going to have to deploy an Azure function. And typically, this is the best way to start using these custom API skills, because they expose a really simple um, REST API that we can just interact with immediately. What Cognitive Search is going to do is basically batch up a load of documents and send them to your function all as one big batch. And we can actually determine the batch size using some of those skill parameters. Your function is then going to have to iterate through that batch, so iterate one by one through each of those, uh, those batched up uh, documents, and perform whatever logic, processing, you know, PI handling, or whatever it's going to be that you're doing to each one of those documents. We then batch them up and send them back out the door to Cognitive Search as a, as a batch of the same size coming in. So that's kind of the key paradigm we need to think about here, is that we're getting a batch, processing them iteratively, and then sending a batch back to Cognitive Search. So another few, few facts. So just touch on that one there again. Data will arrive in batches. There's an example of, of a batch there, for example. Um, as you can see, data will arrive. You need to be able to unpack that batch inside your function. The return JSON that you have must match the same batch size. Sorry. So you might want to try using try and accept handlers to make sure that if your function fails anywhere along the processing, you can handle that, func that, that, um, that exception and pass back a default response. The, the, the actual response itself needs to have four key attributes. It needs to have a record ID. It needs to have the data, which is going to contain the fields you want to blend back into your search index, so the, the AI-enriched fields. It must have an errors object and a warnings object as well, which can get bubbled up through your indexer and capture any errors and warnings. Uh, and the nice thing about using functions in this particular regard is that you can write them in C Sharp, Python, JavaScript. So whatever your developers are trying to do, you've got a lot of options there, um, even PowerShell, for example, you know, to handle these kind of very specific requests. Um, so we can also use these custom Web API skills to integrate with some really, really key services that come into play when we start talking about knowledge mining and enriching our documents. The first one I want to talk about is Azure OpenAI endpoints. These are still relatively new, um, but these are a really, really powerful implementation of the GPT-3 models, such as DaVinci um, and Ada and Babbage, et cetera, all those kind of models that are powering tools like uh, ChatGPT, for example. So when we're talking about the OpenAI endpoints, we've got two kind of options to look at. The first is the completions API. And this is the one that everyone is quite familiar with. You kind of pass a prompt in, and text is going to get generated and passed back for you. This is a fantastic, fantastic way of doing things like document summarization, even putting questions into your index, question answering, for example. Um, and there's also code completion options in here as well. So if there is code being stored in your search index, for example, you've got some code options around that too. 
You've also got the embeddings API, which is fantastic if you want to feed this information into um, subsequent downstream machine learning models. And those embeddings can be a really powerful way of doing things like text similarity searching. There's OpenAI. So the way we do this is we take our Azure function, and we use that prompt to throw into the Azure OpenAI endpoint. And that will return back to us an object with some text inside of it. The other one is Form Recognizer. So Form Recognizer is a really, really powerful way of looking at a template or looking at a document and, and extracting key pieces of information that we've predefined. And again, there's two kind of key ways of using this. The first is a template model. And this is where we explicitly say, for this template, extract these fields or these regions and return them in this format. And then there's the slightly more nuanced neural models that can actually generalize across a number of different templates and actually start to understand the core pieces of information you're looking for and not just explicitly where they are on a given page. So very, very powerful options there with Form Recognizer. And again, if you want to integrate here, we would pass in a document location where Form Recognizer can go and get the document, shred all the content that you're looking for, and then pass that back to your Azure function. And that can then get blended back into your index. So two really powerful integrations there. The final one I was going to touch on is Azure Machine Learning. So um, again, we've got you know, a similar skill set here, doing a couple of activities, and we've got our Azure Machine Learning skill. And typically speaking, when you're working with Azure Machine Learning, you start with a data set, so you get some data, you then kind of bring alongside a notebook, and you use that notebook to train a model, you then deploy that model, typically out to something like Azure Kubernetes Service that then operates in the cloud. And again, we've got that really su super simple JSON interface where we can pass inputs as a JSON array and get our prediction or our score or whatever it's going to be out of our Azure AML model, essentially, um, and then blend that back into our index. So a really, really common format that we can use for a whole host of different reasons to get those AI enrichments into our search index. So the last thing that I'll kind of touch on here is how we can maximize um, our AI enrichments and make sure that we're getting the most out of them um, inside of our index. So where our sort of document starts its life, you know, it's a bit black and white, it's a little bit bland, a little bit boring, it's just a raw document. We can start to plumb in those cognitive skills and start to really enrich that document. So for example, we might start with a document classifier. What type of document is this? Is it an invoice? Is it a terms and conditions? Is it a legal document? That might decide how we're going to process it further down the line. We might then attach some sentiment analysis to that and start looking at whether it's a positive or negative document. We could then say, OK, well, if we found some negative reviews, let's do some key phrase extraction. Let's pull out the key bits of information about that. Uh, let's summarize that as well so we can put together a nice little summary to put in front of some users or some key product people to maybe understand what's going on. And lastly, let's translate that so we can disseminate that across a number of different global regions, for example. So we've built up this really rich set of, kind of, 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 uh, of key cognitive skills there. But the problem is, what do we do with that next, right? That's the kind of the key thing. So some things we can do is things like pass that on to other data science tools and do some ML and data science with that. Or just some custom analytics. Can we just count kind of the positive versus negative reviews, for example, for certain SKUs? Um, also using things like search apps, so giving users the ability to just search through that using natural language querying. And lastly, can we blend that back into Dataverse and other kind of business applications that, that users are, are, are using? Um, and typically speaking, it can be quite a long journey to get from you know, starting with a whole load of documents in a repository and getting to a point where you've got this highly enriched index that you can then start to realize some of these more advanced use cases. So that's why I just want to touch on at the end here um, that we as a datist have a, an AI and cognitive search accelerator that uses generic kind of tools and pipelines to help utilize some of these kind of key AI enrichments through cognitive search to help deliver on these use cases in a very quick and, uh, and accelerated format. So thank you very much for listening, everyone. I hope that's been informative and, and, and useful. Um, if anyone has any questions, I think we may have a minute or two just now. Um, but if not, you can always come find me at the data stand um, out in the corner here, um, or I'll be around the conference for the next couple of days. So thank you very much, everyone.